Sports, My Line, brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, let's all play What's My Line? Let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. All New Yorkers are thrilled by our Giants football team, especially this week. And I'm thrilled to introduce one of its great stars, Frank Gifford. And I'm thrilled to introduce that star of that new play, Beekman Place, which is now playing in Philadelphia, the lovely Arlene Francis. And now a member of our team who always completes every pass he makes, <laughs> Mr. Bennett <laughs> Sir. Here's another great gridiron star, only has one trouble. He's constantly being penalized because his backfield is continually and illegally in motion. <laughs> John Charles Daly. Well, I see we've gone football tonight, and I can't think of a better cause than to go and to have Frank Gifford with us. Those of us who live in New York are particularly lucky we get a chance to see Bob Trout and, and Frank do the daily television news report. And he's not only a great football player, he's a threat in television, too. Frank, nice to have you with us. It helps explain what's happened to my voice. I went to the game Friday night, Frank, and I haven't been the same since. Like, if you don't hear me, just holler and I'll try to speak up, but I doubt we'll if I can. You right. We'll hear you. Yeah, I thought you might be able to. Well, we have some very interesting occupations. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this. Now to meet our first challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? David? Aylock. That right, sir? Mr. Aylott, where are you from? From London, England. From London, England. Right. Nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. Mr. Aylott, may I present our panel? Yeah. Now, if you'll join me over here, we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. Aylott is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Aylott, is it a product that is used in America as well as in your own country? Yes. Is it a product that one finds in the home? Yes. Is it useful rather than decorative? Both. Is it a product uh, let that... Me, let me have a small conference here, if I may. <laughs> We want to be fair. Since when? <laughs> Since I lost my voice, Friday night. <laughs> now, we do want to be fair, and we would feel that if we were to let the, the, just the flat affirmative answer that it was both decorative and useful stand, uh, it might possibly mislead one or more of you, and that we would not want to happen. So we'll give you a no instead of a yes. One down, nine to go, Mr. Oh, Sir. Are you going to say which part of it is not right? That's one you can find out if you just ask a few questions. <laughs> is it a useful product, Mr. Aylott? <laughs> that uh, no. makes it two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Aylott, I hardly know what to ask you, but is it a decorative product? Yes. 
Uh, therefore, might I assume that when it is found in the home, it is in plain sight of the visitor? Yes. Uh, would it be found in the living, dining, kitchen area? Could be, yes. Could it also be found in the bedroom area? Yes. <laughs> Do you think that that would be likely? Yes. <laughs> but you obviously don't think it would be funny. And the audience does. Oh, I don't think it'd be funny. No, no. no. Uh, would you imagine, knowing what you know of uh, American life, that I would have one of these things? <laughs> you think that Mr. Gifford might have one? <laughs> No, I don't think so. Three down and seven to go. This, that's your turn now, Frank. Well, this is a product that uh, my wife would have, and I wouldn't. Yes. Would this be uh, something she might use to make herself more attractive? Yes. Of course, at this point, Frank, you always answer if it was possible that she could be more attractive. Uh, you know, I, I want to get uh, you off the hook. <laughs> I hope she assumes that. Is it something uh, to do with... Uh, Control of weight? No. No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Francis, and you're in trouble, boy. I know. If I'm not the home tonight. I met your wife and she has no weight problem, Frank. Uh, is this product something that is worn on the person? Yes. Or would it be found in a store for apparel? You mean a store which restricted itself entirely to the selling of apparel? No. That's fine. That you asked the question. You got to know. Dan had got there first, so that's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. A. Lott, is this one above the waist? Yes. Is it one above the neck? Yes. Is it one in below the hairline? Yes. Is it one in the vicinity of the mouth? No. <laughs> the great idea, though, Bennett, at six down and four to go, Miss Gildell. Is it worn in the vicinity of the eyes? Yes. Is it false eyelashes? Yes. yes. Now, actually, Mr. Aylott is Eyelure of London. Oh, but yeah. the surprising little statistic I picked up for this particular day in my life was that Mr. Aylett's firm, if I'm correct, you yes. let me go, otherwise stop me, sells a million pairs of false eyelashes in the United States alone. Besides a, a big world the, market. Big, big world market. Uh, this, John, is the year of frank false eyelash. Women don't even bother pretending anymore that they're not fake. Oh, I thought you meant frank. Oh, sorry, oh, Frank. No. <laughs> that Mr. Mr. Is one thing I've always wanted to know about those four eyelashes. Were they ever alive? <laughs> Sometime, yeah. Sure, made out of live. Do right you know there. what they're made of, Bennett? I hate to think. They're made of either from, from uh, human hair, and they're also made from certain uh, animal hair, such as mink hair and sable hair. But they're all thoroughly sterilized before, uh, during production. <laughs> How would you like a pair of sable eyelashes, Bennett, sir? Uh, <laughs> man, that's what I call going. Before you, you actually used to be in the movies, used to do makeup. Yes, I was, I was a started. movie makeup artist for, oh, for 20 years. 20 years. Well, you've been... And this business started as a tiny little sideline and has now grown so big that I don't have any time for movie work anymore. Oh, that's tough. Just have nothing to do not with... Not really. Uh, not really. That's a good honest man. Thank you very much, sir. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Second challenger, would you enter and sign in, please? <whistles> Diane? Steiner, right? <laughs> All right. Is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Steiner? 
Miss. Miss Steiner, where are you from, ma'am? Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills in California? Yes. Very nice to have you with us. Miss Steiner, may I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. tell you that Miss Steiner is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Miss Steiner, with the thought that they never have the obvious person on a show like this, may I assume that you have nothing whatever to do with motion pictures? Yes. May I also assume you have nothing whatever to do with show business? Yes. Have you anything to do with the world of fashion? Nothing. No. Nope. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you do any of your work indoors? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gifford. <laughs> whatever work you do... <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever work you do, would it be something that uh, I might call upon you to have you do to me? <laughs> I'd be something that you might call Miss Steiner to have her do to you, I think we've got to be honest and say no. no. That's three down and seven to go, and you'll understand why a bit later, Frank. Miss Francis? Um, it, is your work out of doors on the ground rather than in the air? Yes. Uh, is it on the ground rather than in the water? Yes. Do you wear something other than ordinary dress when you are uh, carrying on your job? Would it be the kind of an outfit or uniform that would be recognizable to us? Yes. Um, is there for your service um, one of non-profit? Do you belong to a non-profit organization? Yes. Yes. Uh, are you associated in, with any branch of the law? No. This raises a very particular question. You're, you asked a very, the question in a very broad area. Now, you say, are you associated with any branch of the law? Do you have particular reference to having something to do with the enforcement of law? Is that what you had in mind? No, and if you want to get another no for yourself, John... <laughs> I'm trying to give you a yes. <laughs> now, no, we will I mean, agree and that... I'll rephrase it. How would that be? Would All that right, be a good fine. idea? Mm -hmm. Do you move around in your job, Miss Steinem? Yes. Could you uh, move from uh, one house to another house in your job, out of doors? Yes. Could you possibly have anything whatsoever to do the, with the uh, post office department? No. No, and I, I want to clarify. We will agree that there is an association with the broad area of law, and leave it there. Mr. Sir. Ms. Steiner, you do wear a uniform in the work that you do. Is it a uniform that would be vaguely connected with the police department? It would be a uniform which, um, if seen by the average individual, would indicate an association with activity which might be generally grouped under the heading of police activity. Yes. Steiner, are children involved in any way in the work that you do? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Miss Steinem, are animals involved in the work that you have to do? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Gifford. Are there a lot of other uh, young, attractive ladies doing the same kind of work? It would be fair to assume that on a national basis, a substantial number of young, attractive ladies were doing the same kind of work. <laughs> do you find that... Uh, being attractive helps you do this work? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's very good. any kind of work. I must just rule that being as attractive as Miss Steiner would help you do any kind of work, so you get no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with parking problems and meters? Yes. Are you a meter maid? Yes. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Let me explain why we had to appear devious. Actually, Miss Steiner does not work for the police department. 
She works for the finance department of Beverly Hills, reports through a chain of command up through the finance uh -huh. department, and does not report to the police department. So we had to fence around this whole question of whether it was police activity, you see. In order to be fair. In order only to be fair. That's all we thought <laughs> to do. Miss Diner, we came very close to giving them a clobbering. Thanks very much uh -huh. for joining us in What's My Line. It's nice to have you with us. Please. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my good friends on the panel are always blindfolded, as you know. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel, we go to a different form of questioning in this case. <laughs> Sorry about this. It'll all, I'll explain it later. Just explaining to our guest why it is I'm having a little trouble with my voice. Uh, uh, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Did you recently occupy the presidential suite at a, an out-of-town hotel? <laughs> <laughs> No. I think it is LBJ. Yeah. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Mr. Giffords. Was that a no? That was a no, yes. <laughs> Do you uh, perform in the entertainment business? Si. That's yes, Miss Francis. Um, do you perform in the theater? Si. Mr. Surf? Uh, I presume... There are two of you. I'm not making that a question. Are you at present appearing on the nightclub hotel ballroom circuit? No. Two down and eight to go. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, that presently uh, encompasses like last week or this week, doesn't it? Not just tonight, when presumably they might be closed. Are you a husband and wife team? Hello? Are you a husband and wife? Si. Mr. Gifford? Is your act uh, comedy rather than uh, musical? <laughs> uh, sometimes. I would say no. Three thousand seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, is it... Uh, are you known for your voices rather than for any other part of your talent? Best known because of your voices? Si! <laughs> Mr. Sir. Do you appear as a husband and wife team when you are performing? Si. You're talking about the present time, Betty. Yes. Well, are they generally known as a Mr. and Mrs. team who work together? No. That no. makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, are you Mr. and Mrs. Robert Goulet? Ah, uh, no. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Gifford. Well, hmm. you, uh, not together. <laughs> have you ever, uh, have you occasionally recorded Western songs? <laughs> See, Miss Francis. Oh, Western songs. <laughs> now, it's only fair to say that we would assume here that if you recorded generally, you know, that we, there would be some element of Western music involved. But some Eastern, too. Some Eastern, too. However, the, the, the fact, have we arrived at the fact that you do not appear together? I, I, that was so vague when it was asked. Well, no, I Somebody think... said, do you appear together as a husband and wife team? And the answer, I believe, was no, wasn't it? Sometimes yes, sometimes, sometimes no. Sometimes what we try to do was to leave oh, the impression sometimes... oh, that it well, could happen. Oh, well, is the man of the team at the present time appearing in a musical on Broadway? See, 
Uh, oh, he's that smashing Steve Lawrence <laughs> and his wife, Eva <laughs> Gardner. You had him completely... What, uh, what happened to your voice, John? I went to see that Frank Gifford play football on Friday night, and I so left my I. voice. We, yeah. Oh, yeah, Edie was at the game yeah. Friday night. Oh, so. You know, uh, Giff, Frank, uh, there was... I don't know if I, I... I saw you the other night after the game, but I don't know if I recall telling this one little story. We were sitting way, way up high, and there was a boy of about 13 sitting next to me. And towards the end of the game, when, you know, that fumble occurred and everything started really happening, he just looked up, didn't talk to anybody, said, Oh, dear Lord, please don't make me cry in front of all these people. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the same thing on the bench. That's when the, you were doing the same thing on the bench? <laughs> That's when they took off their false eyelashes and went to work. <laughs> I, I think the Chicago Bears were doing a little crying this afternoon, don't you? Yeah, I think yeah, so. I, uh, I think also that we must mention the, pl the musical that Steve Lawrence is in and in which he shines gloriously is what made Sammy run. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Steve, Steve, who wrote that again? I don't seem to... Uh, of course, then, you know sir. who it's written by. It's uh, written by Bud Schulberg oh, and yes, his brother Bud Stuart. Uh, to the and actually, it's it Edie Gourmet that made Sammy run, right, Edie? Yes. Oh, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Absolutely. Now, it's, and it was difficult to answer the question, do you work together? Because actually, Steve and Edie do, but since Steve has been such a great, wonderful hit, and, and uh, he's been very busy on Broadway. Edie, you're going into the Copacabana mm -hmm. earlier this, you know, I'm October. I'm going into the Copa on October 8th. By herself, but you'll be back together again on television. So how do you, how do we say it? Do we say yes, they do together? Sometimes. Or they do? That, sometimes. Was how, Which, that was how Like I most arrived. married couples, they're together sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, as always, uh, it's a joy to see Steve's been on the panel, what, four or five times so far? Yes, sir. Last season. Yes. Joy to see you on it. both sides of the aisle. Yes, sir. Sir. Hope we see Always you back enjoyable that time. Thanks a lot. Thank for you, John. Always your nice. night off. Thank you. Thank you. rather well so far tonight and offer congratulations and we'll all be back after this word. Frank, before you get away from us, I think we could do a big service for those who love uh, professional football, as so many of us do. Give us a report on the great Y.A. Tittle. How is he feeling tonight? Well, John, uh, I just saw him this afternoon. Uh, I think he's much better than he was last week and, uh, of course, if uh, he ever plays again like he did Friday, that's good enough. Uh, I would just like to say it was the most incredible performance I think I've ever seen by a football player to come out with the, an injury he had and go through with it and provide that winning punch, which he did. He sure yeah. did. That's he where is I the greatest the in my book. He good. Thanks a lot, Frank. And may I say good night to uh, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Frank, and good luck. Thank you. Yes, ditto, Frank. And I hope you have a good time. In, where do you go? Newcastle, Pennsylvania? Yeah, Tuesday night. You're such Near a traveling Pittsburgh. salesman. I know. <laughs> what are, you, are you going to Newcastle? I'm a coal going to Newcastle. You say it. <laughs> Good night, John. Ah, oh, that isn't fair now. I don't mess up his puns, do I? Well, there's a coal going to Newcastle. So duck everybody in Newcastle. And from all of us, thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Thank you.